So we have this example what? What? Ah, okay. So we have this example for a steady flow state. Uh, energy equation so steady flow energy equation so during a steady flow process the pressure of a working substance drops from 200 to 20 psie or pounds per square absolute so the speed increased from 200 to 1000 foot per second the internal energy of the open system decreases 25 uh, BTU per pound and the specific volume increases from 1 to 8 cubic feet per pound. So, no heat is transferred. So, we need to determine the work per pound. Okay. So, the very first thing to do with regards to this type of problem so, is to draw the steady flow um, uh, the uh, steady flow energy diagram. So, how do we do that? So, we will sketch or we will sketch the system. So, let's just say that the system is represented by this uh, somewhat a square or a rectangle. So, we we'll just put their system. Okay. So in this side, we will try to uh, we'll write the um, energy that is entering the system. So energy. So what are those energy? So from the previous topic, we've learned or you have we have copied. No, I guess you just copied the problems. So we have potential energy, kinetic, then uh, internal energy, then the workflow energy. Uh, flow work energy internal then i guess we have also the enthalpy no enthalpy okay yeah energy is an uh, uh, enthalpy is an energy it is present and applicable to all fluids no okay so the very first thing is we need to de determine the type or the the energy that is entering the system okay so is there any kinetic energy entering the system so when you say kinetic energy the for the uh, formula or the the kinetic energy must have an elevation so try to check your notes the z uh, the z2 minus z1 so kinetic kinet, uh, kinetic uh, the potential energy so is there any elevation given so, if, in the problem, there is no elevation. So, if there is no elevation, then you don't have the potential energy. So, next, kinetic energy. So, kinetic energy must have velocity. So, do we have velocity given? So, we have this 200 and 1,000. So, we will have... Yeah. Uh, foot per second. It, it is like meter per second. That is... Velocity. You have learned that in your physics, I guess. So we have key one. So that is, we have a kinetic energy entering the system. Next, what other else? What? So we have this pressure. So the pressure will be used for uh, flow work. No flow work. So we we'll have here W F. 1 so wf sub 1 then we have also we have this 1 to 2 cubic feet per pound so what is the use of this given this one does that value mm. Mm. what is the use of that the use of that is without usage <laughs> So it is still uh, used for the workflow. Workflow. In the last one, we have the internal energy, which is our U1. Okay. Next. So, whatever energy is entering the system, it is also the energy that is going out the system. So we'll try to use 
another color of pen so what color there's no pink so we have this one blue this is k kinetic energy two we have w f1 ah f2 w f sub 2 and u 2 then we'll also try to see if there is heat transferred so given in the problem no heat is transferred so th therefore our q is equal to zero no zero then we'll try to determine now the work done by the system or the work per pound so we don't know if the work is done by the system so when you, when you say if the work is done by the system so the system the arrow for work is going out so the system is uh, giving out work so the the work is the output of the system if the work is done on the system so work is added to the system this is work done in done in the system and work done by the system so the the arrow will have its own uh, meaning so this this just assume that the work is done by the system so when you say work is done by the system our work is the output of the system so if in case that our assumption is wrong the value of our work will just be negative the value of w will just be negative if our assumption is wrong so the next thing is we will do the um, equation so the uh, steady flow energy equation so it just like um, statics so the the sum of the forces is equal to zero so this is the sum of the um the the energy entering and leaving the system is equal to zero so we could say that the energy entering the system is equal to the energy leaving the system so if we have this one these are this, this these are our energy that is entering the system so the sum of this one k a1 plus w if one plus u1 is equal to this energy is are leaving the system so we have w plus k a2 plus w f2 plus u2 hmm. so we have now the equation so by this equation we can now solve for our w this one we can solve this one how do you solve this one if we know the value of our ke1 wf1 u1 ke2 wf2 and u2 this this is just simple algebra if we have the value of those um those energies now oh, so we'll try to solve the value from the given okay uh, so first we will solve for the kinetic energy so kinetic energy so because there is no given mass so there is no given mass right so that's why the problem is work per pound because we are we are sol solving a problem which the unit of mass is or the value of mass is assumed to be one pound so that is this, this is uh, sometimes called per unit analysis okay so for ke1 so if we are solving for per unit ma uh, per unit analysis of the the energy so our key is small uh, represented by a small letter that is to represent that it is per unit or in other in a, in a simpler term it is to represent that we have no mass given we assume that mass is equal to one pound so what is the formula for kinetic energy 
mv mv squared so the v there is the velocity so because our mass is equal to 1 pound so we could just rewrite our equation as v squared over 2 k so what will be our v so what is the initial velocity so the speed increases from 200 to 1000 so the 200 that is your initial velocity so we have 200 that is for the out this one feet per second per feet per second dead will square that one Mm. FPS feet per second or foot per second then we have 2 then what is the value of our K mm. K our K is 32.174 uh, pound mass this is to convert the given into pound force per pound mass. Pound force second. Okay. So we can now cancel the units that could be cancelled. This one. Oh, it can't be cancelled because this is squared, right? So we will have this one be cancelled. So so we have here remaining one so we just cancel this one second so we have one there so our value now is equal to we don't have the calculator i hate drugs the 200 will be squared just find a calculator cash you okay Okay, so we have 200 squared over 2 times 32.174. Okay, so we have 621.62. So 600, 621.62. The unit will be pound mass a uh, pound force sorry pound force because this pound force will be uh, going up so pound force we have feet per pound mass then second then this is we will try to convert this one into a uh, much uh, simpler unit of energy in the in the English system, which is BTU. So the, the we could say, if we if we just uh, able to memorize the conversion. So uh, I believe you are <laughs> you are not able to memorize. No, it's okay. Ah, something something. <laughs> something something. Okay, we have we have one BTU British thermal unit is equal to seven. So this is very easy to memorize. Seven eight. Then we have pound force feet over pound mass second. So we could cancel this one against this one. So we will now have our our value of our BTU in the pound mass is not included in the cancellation. So we now have zero point let's say this is zero point six. Uh, answer divide seven seven eight. 
and we have zero point seven nine nine. So we just uh, we just write three decimal places. Zero point seven nine nine BTU per pound mass. So the cancel is this one and only this one and this one and this one. Okay. So the pound mass will be retained because that is the exact value of the conversion. Okay. Uh, the conversion factor for 1 BTU is equal to 778 pound force feet per second. There, there's no pound mass. So you... No. So the, your your answer will be on BTO per pound. So it is also consistent with the problem because we are trying to solve work per pound. Okay, so we have our work here and we have per pound. Next, we'll solve for, uh, let's just go directly to kinetic energy too. So uh, because it is also, uh, it has the same formula. So key, yeah. Because they are all kinetic energy so we have v squared uh, v squared this is two so i guess this is one here squared over 2k so substituting the given so we have what is our velocity two from 200 to 1000 so we have 1000 so 1000 feet per second then we will be uh, square over 2 times 32.174 this is pound force oh, pound mass pound mass feet over pound force per uh, pound for second okay then we know that the unit this unit of this one will be this one so we can auto, uh, we can just convert it immediately to 1 BTU because it it is the same process with the previous uh, kinetic energy 778 pound force feet second okay so our unit so we could cancel this one and this one then this one this one this one and this one this one so cancel so our unit is in BTO per pound mass so we have one thousand squared uh, one hundred one thousand squared over two times thirty two point one one seventy four times seven seven eight an answer will be nineteen point 97 so we have 19.97 BTU per pound mass okay so we have we are now through solving for kinetic energy so we will go to workflow of our flow work no flow work flow work so what is the formula for flow work so let's say WF1 what is the formula for that? That is pressure times volume. So do we have volume? We have ah, we have one cubic feet and our pressure is two hundred psia uh, two hundred psia. So our, we could say the formula is pressure. 1 times V1 <coughs> V2 
V1. Okay. So, what is the pressure? The first one is 200 PSI. That is pound per square inch. So, because our volume is in cubic feet per pound, so what we will do? We will convert this one into square feet. So, we will have um, uh, uniformity in the units. So, how to convert this, this one? So, we have 12 inch squared is to 1 feet or 1 square foot. So, we just have this one in uh, brace. So, uh, the what will remain is the pound. This is actually pound force because pressure is force per square, uh, force per unit area. So, this is actually pound force. Okay. So, we could cancel the square inch. So, this will be 12 squared. So, cancel square inch. So, we will have now tw uh, 200 pound per square feet. Then, we will multiply our volume. Our volume is 1 cubic feet per pound. So, that we have this one, a given. 1 cubic, 1 cubic feet per pound. So, that is the unit of our volume. Okay. So, we, will, we could now cancel. Cancel this one and we have, the remaining will be 1. So, our unit now is pound force. Pound force. We have feet. Per pound. So, this is pound mass actually. This is pound mass. Okay. So, what will be the next move? Square. Because inch square and square foot. Because you squared this uh, conversion factor above, so we'll also square this one uh, to have a uh, consistency in our unit. Okay. So, this one, I believe we have, uh, this one will be squared because the K, going back to the kinetic energy, this will be squared. So, I just have some mistakes here. Squared. This, uh, we don't have a value... This is already cancelled out from this one. So, this is no more. This is no more. This is also... Uh, this is just pound mass here. So, so we will have... This one is already squared. So, this is already cancelled from this one. So... Because our K is pound mass foot per pound force second squared. So, we will try to see your notes. Yeah, the, it is not S because it is acceleration times the mass and the force. That is for our K. So, what is the answer for this one? So, let's answer. So, we have 200 times 12 squared. We have one, so over one. So that is two eight eight to uh, twenty eight thousand eight hundred. So we have twenty eight twenty eight thousand eight hundred. Okay. So twenty eight thousand eight hundred. So we to have a consistent value. So we will convert this one into. We'll convert this one into what? To ourselves? To BTO again. So we have one. Yeah, you must have consistency in the units. One BTO over seven, seven, eight pound force 
fit so that so there's no seconds in the in, in the unit for this one so cancel this also cancel so we'll have uh, BTU per pound mass okay so we have 28,800 divided by 778 so we have 37.02 so 37 point zero two BTU per pound mass so we will proceed immediately to WF2 so WF2 so having the same formula so our pressure 2 will be multiplied by our volume 2 so our pr pr pressure 2 going back to the problem above so we have 20 PSI we have 20 PSI. So this is pound per square inch. Again, we will convert this one into pounds per square foot or feet. The same process as the above. This is 12 squared inch squared over you could write here one squared but one squared is just another <laughs> one so you just uh, neglect the one squared because it's just equal to one so cancel cancel then we have what is the volume our second volume or the final volume is eight so eight cubic eight cubic feet per pound mass then we can also convert this immediately into BTU so because this is the same process 1 BTU over 778 pound force per feet So, what will be the answer? So, the unit, this one, because we could cancel the units here, this is pound force, I believe. So, we have, we have BTU per pound mass. So, using our very high-tech calculator, we have 20 times 12 squared times 8 over 778 is equal to 29.61 right 29.61 okay so we we have now solved for this one ke1 WF1, KA2, and WF2. So the remaining now for us to solve the W is U1 and U2. So going back to the given problem, so U1 and U2 represents the internal energy. So in the problem, is the internal energy given. So we have the statement, the internal energy of the open system decreases 25 BTU. So when you say decreases 25 BTU, what does it mean? So your initial initial internal energy, for example, U1 is greater than your final internal energy or the internal energy going out the system. Right? So you can say that U1 minus U2 is equal to 25 uh, BTU is it BTU the unit BTU or we will, will be converting ah okay BTU BTU per pound 
mass. Okay, so going back to our equ equation, we have Ke1 plus Wf1 plus U1 is equal to W plus Ke2 plus W F two plus U two. So we could transpose this U two to the other side of the equation. So we will have U one minus U two, and we have the value for U one minus U two, which is twenty five. So let's rewrite this one. K E one plus W F one plus so we just put it did this one in uh, parentheses u1 minus u2 is equal to w plus k e2 plus w f2 then we will solve for w so using our knowledge in algebra we could say that w is equal to so all of the other all, all of the other value which are not required or which which is uh, with w will be transposed to the other side so that will be subtracted so we have ke1 plus w f1 plus u1 minus u2 Minus, so this one, ke2 minus wf2. So we'll now substitute the uh, values that we, uh, we managed to solve. So the solution is somewhat uh, uh, very long. <laughs> so we have 0 0.0. 0 .0 Seven, nine, nine. Then we have WF one is equal to thirty-seven point two. So we we can we can write without the units because we know that the units is already uniform. Plus U one minus U two, which is twenty-five minus what is our K A two. 19.97 so we have minus 19.97 minus 29.61 so equals so if our w will be negative so going back to our sketch so this arrow will be going inside if it is negative if it is positive then we ha we have we have the right assumption that the work is done by the system okay so let's call on our trusted calculator 0 0.799 minus 37.02 ah minus plus minus plus 25 minus 19.97 minus 29.61 and we have 13.239 or we could say that it is 13.24 BTU per pound mass and this will be our answer so that is the work done by the system because the answer is positive so we have the right assumption so the work done by the system is 13.24 bto per pound